Worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Archbishop Abram. Amen. 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 Thank Mother Abram for being in our presence Amen. this afternoon. Amen. Thank God for allowing us to be here on such a glorious occasion. Yes. I am Bishop Dr. William McFall Amen. of New Beginning Praise and Worship Ministries down in Rayford, North Carolina. Amen. And uh, we are on assignment. Yes. Thank you for the opening of this great, great church. Amen? Yeah, amen. Amen. This afternoon, our scripture lesson will be coming from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. Yes. And we shall begin our reading at the first verse. Yes. Acts chapter 2. Amen. And we shall begin reading at the first verse. Will you please stand for the reading of the word? Amen. 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 Acts chapter 2, yes. verse 1, where the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. they were all with in one place on one accord, yes. and suddenly there came a sound from heaven yes. as a rushing mighty wind, yes. and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost yes. and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. This afternoon briefly we've entitled our message It's the anointing that makes the difference yes. in our lives. Yes. It's the anointing that makes the difference in our lives. Amen. I simply believe yes. that God does not do anything by chance. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we being here on this afternoon, Amen. God had exactly who he needed here Amen. to hear what the Spirit was saying to the church. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Amen. If you don't mind, I invite you to say this confession with me. Amen. And I've learned to say this confession because 
I like to know exactly what I'm doing and what I'm believing. Mm -hmm. If you will, step, hold your Bibles in your right hand and repeat after me. This is the living word of God. This, this is, is the living, living word of God. God. The living word of God dwells in my heart by faith. The living word of God dwells in my heart by faith. I'm about to receive its life-giving truth. I'm about to receive its life-giving truth. It is my daily provision. It is my daily provision. For I'm grown by the word of God. For I'm grown by the word of God. I am changed by the word of God. I am changed by the word of God. I am cleansed by the word of God. I am cleansed by the word of God. I am kept by the word of God. I am kept by the word of God. I share God's life through his word. I share God's life through his word. I win souls through declaring the word. I win souls through declaring the word. I need to defeat the devil through the word. I defeat the devil through the word. My faith is based on the word. My faith is based on the word. And produced by the word. And produced by the word. Our eternal authority is the word of God. Our eternal authority is the word of God. In every needed blessing. In every needed blessing. Is revealed in the word. Is revealed in the word. So I determine now. So I determine now. As an act of my own will. As an act of my own will. I will hear the word. I will hear the word. I will believe the word. I will believe the word. I will receive the word. I will receive the word. And I will do the word of God. And I will do the word of God. Because if I do, because if I do, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Repeat after me. I am. I am. What the word of God. The word of God says I am. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We, we, we declare and decree that we won't be long tonight, Amen. but we do have a word from the Lord and we are on assignment. Amen. Our assignment lesson tonight is the anointing Amen. that makes the difference Amen. in our life. It's the anointing that makes the difference in our life. Yes. Apostle, I simply believe Amen. that no one can do anything real anything true or anything lasting for God yes. except the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of them. That's right. I believe that when a person has been filled with the Spirit of God and the power of God dwells on the inside of them, yes. that greater is He in me than He that's in the world. Yes. I can be anything. I can have anything. I can do anything. Yes. And there's no devils, no demons, no principalities of wickedness that dwell in high places that can keep me, that can hold me, that can limit me from being all that the Word of God said I can be. I want to talk about this afternoon the anointing. Yes, yes. It's the anointing yes, yes. that makes the difference in our lives. Amen. Understand, most of us started out on our Christian journey basically the same way. Yes. We started out as ordinary people. Yes. We accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. Yes. We joined a church and accepted uh, certain responsibilities. Yes. But oftentimes, we found that the jobs that were assigned to our hands required more than our natural abilities could produce. Amen. We found ourselves trying to operate on our own strength, mm -hmm. on our own ability, yes. on our own intellect, yes. on our own natural powers. Yes. But how many of us know that if we're going to be effective in the work of God, yes. if we're going to be successful in the things of God, yes. if we're going to be all that God wants us to be, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is what's going to get us there. Yes, yes. Amen. Naturally, one does not think the thoughts of God. Amen. Naturally, one does not desire the things of God. Amen. Naturally, one cannot do the things of God. Amen. But we think, yes. we desire, yes. and we do the things of God yes. by the power that worketh in us, and that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. Amen. When operating on natural abilities, we oftentimes experience disqualification. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some kind of way, we don't feel that we're qualified to do that which God has chosen us to do. Mm -hmm. But how many of us know that if God has chosen us, yes. he's also qualified Amen. us? Yes. Secondly, we often have a battle with fear, thinking that the position God has given us is more than we can handle or too big for us. That's right. mm -hmm. But how many of us know that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, Amen. but of love, of power, and of a sound mind? Yes. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. In this life, 
Yes. We're going to run into situations where it makes no difference who we are. Amen. It'll make no difference who we know. Yes. It'll make no difference what our life, our position in life is, mm -hmm. or our ability, all we count on, all we depend on, will soon run out and we'll have no reserve. Amen. And the only thing that will keep us, the only thing that will hold us, the only thing that will take us to the next level with God is the anointing of His Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's the anointing that makes the difference in our lives. Yeah, right. yeah. If we're going to rise to our full potential, yeah. if we're going to rise from where we are to where God wants us to be, Amen. the anointing of the Holy Spirit must abide. Amen. If we're going to be successful in our walk with God, it won't be because of our educational background. Amen. It won't be because of our social status. Amen. It won't be because of how much influence that we have. Mm -hmm. It won't even be done because of how long we've been in the church. Yeah. But if we're going to go to the next level with God, the Holy Spirit is what's going to get us there. Yes. Amen. Now, the anointing is not programmed according to seasons. Right. The anointing does not vacate because of upcoming events. Amen. The anointing does not go undercover because of present surroundings. Amen. Regardless to where you are, Amen. regardless to who you are, regardless to who you're around, the anointing will speak for himself. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the anointing has the power to transform you into another person. That's right. In the book of Samuel, there was a man by the name of Saul, whom God has selected to be king of Israel. Right. Amen. The Bible says he had to make up to be a great leader. Yes. Says his father was rich. Yes. Had more had great influence. The Bible said Saul was tall and more handsome than any man in Israel. That's right. Mm -hmm. He had a humble attitude. Yes. He showed an interest in saving others. Yes. But when God chose to make Saul king of Israel, Jesus. it was necessary that the Spirit of God come upon him. Yes. Yes. When Samuel, Samuel first of all anointed Saul with oil, yes. symbolizing that the Holy Spirit had come upon him. That's yes. right. When Samuel placed the oil upon Saul's head, yes. something interesting yes, happened. Yes. According to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 6, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, yes, and thou shalt prophesy with them, yes. and shall be turned into another man. Yes. All we have to do is remember when the Lord God found us. Yes. Yes. It was we were ordinary people. Yes. It was an ordinary day. Yes. We were doing ordinary things, yes. getting ordinary results. Yes. But when the hand of God touched our life, we've never been the same Amen. because it was the anointing that made the difference yes. in our life. Amen. Amen. For those of us who don't understand what the anointing does, yes. the Bible declares it's the yoke destroying, yes. burden removing, uh -huh. power of God. That's right. Understand if it's the yoke destroying, why are so many people living beneath their privilege? Mm -hmm. If it's the burden removing, why are so many people weighed down with the things of this world? Mm -hmm. The Bible says it's the yoke destroying, yeah. mm -hmm. burden removing, yes. power of God. The anointing is an extra endowment of power yeah. given to an individual that will ignite them to do what they could not naturally do. Yeah. Amen. I need to say that again. Yeah. The anointing yeah. is an extra endowment of power yes. Yes. that will ignite a person to do what they could not naturally do. Uh -huh. The anointing will pull you, it will push you, mm -hmm. will give you zeal to do that which you could not naturally do. Naturally, we can't walk right. Amen. Naturally, we can't talk right. Amen. Naturally, we can't live right. Mm -hmm. Naturally, we can't love our enemies. Mm -hmm. Naturally, we can't pray for those who despite and misuse us and speak all manner of evil against us. Naturally, we can't love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. The anointing will cause old things to pass away, yes, and yea, and behold, all things will become new. Yeah. But you must be careful not to miss the anointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you miss the anointing, you'll have to confess, yes. as did the disciples, we've taught all night, yeah. and we've caught nothing. Yeah. It's the anointing that makes the difference in our life. Yes. We, we, we won't be long, uh, uh, Apostle, we won't be long. The Bible declares, in uh, First Kings, right. about a prophet called Elijah. Yes. Elijah 
was so entrusted with the anointing mm. until the Bible says that he can pray to the heavens and the heavens will give no rain. Wow. Yeah. Elijah was so entrusted with the anointing Amen. until he had the raven to bring him breakfast and the raven yes. and would bring him yes. soul. Yes. Yes. God trusted Elijah so much with the anointing Jesus. until Elijah could lay himself upon a, 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 a child that was dead and the child came back to life. Amen. Amen. Elijah Amen. was so entrusted with the anointing Jesus. until he until he put the prophets of Baal to the test and God showed up and, he, and allowed him to slew 850 prophets of Baal. Yes. Well, some theologians argue that point. Some theologians want to know, well, I don't think it was for 450. But the Bible says 400 prophets ate from Jezebel's table. Yes. But when Elijah got ready to put them to the test, he said, bring them all to the brook. Bring everyone up. And the Bible says that he slew them with the sword. Yes. That's right. yes. But that was a wonderful thing. Yes. But one thing he didn't bet on is that he, that Jezebel was going to take out revenge. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. These prophets were doing the duties of Jezebel. And Jezebel was in control. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel said, you go back and you tell that book. Mm -hmm. Ahab come down and told her. He said, Jezebel... A, a, uh, Elijah is killing all your prophets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, you go back and you tell that book, if I don't do the same thing to him by this time tomorrow, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And the Bible declares that Elijah heard it with his ears. Mm -hmm. He saw it with his mind. Yes, sir. And he began to run for his life. Yes, he Isn't that yes. something we can hear it with our ears uh -huh. and see it with our mind and we'll be running with nothing not even chasing Because right, right, right. the yeah. enemy has a way of blowing that thing up and magnifying that thing and making it worse than what it really is. Uh -huh. That's right. That's true. The Bible says Elijah, this great man of God, that could call down fire from heaven. Yeah. This great man of God. That can bring people back to life. This great man of God that can pray to the heavens and the heavens wouldn't get no rain. This great man of God that slew the prophets of Baal, the, uh, the false god. This great man of God had all this power. Yes. And running from Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's yes. And the Bible declares that the spirit of the Lord catches up with Elijah. Yes, sir. And this Elijah is sitting under a juniper tree. Wishing that he might die. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, he said, listen, I've had enough. My God. He said, listen, God, I'm the only one holding up the yeah. bloodstained banner of yeah. the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm the only one keeping your commandments. Yeah. They're tearing down your altar. Yeah. They're killing your prophets with yeah. the sword. Yeah. And they're after me. They're trying to kill me. And I'm the only one. Yes. Yeah. 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 And Amen. the Lord has has to do a thing with Elijah as he had to do with all of us. Yes, he yes, had to have yes, compassion on yes, Elijah. Yes, oh, yes. Yes, yes. Even though Elijah wasn't yes, doing his will, yes. even though Elijah was running away from his responsibility, yes. God still yes, had is. compassion upon him. Yes, now isn't that something yes, we, can be, yes. we can do all the things wrong and God so loved the world that oh, he gave his only oh, begotten yes. son, he's yes. still going to come back and see about you. Yes, yes, yes. 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 God, he still don't give up on us. Thank you, God. The Bible says that God has an encounter with Elijah one more time. Yeah. He feeds Elijah. Mm -hmm. He clothes Elijah. And the Bible says that Elijah run 40 nights and 40 days in the strength of one meal. Mm -hmm. When the spirit of the Lord catches up with Elijah again, Elijah is lodging in a cave. Mm -hmm. And the spirit answers Elijah. What thou do thou do with here, Elijah? Yes, yes, he yes. said, Lord God of hosts, yes. I, it's enough, my Lord, Lord God of hosts. Amen. I'm not better than my father. Listen, yes, yes. listen, my father's run from this thing. My father's duck this thing. Yes. And listen, I'm not better than they are. Yes. I know you want me to be stronger. I know you want me to be better. But listen, I'm fearing the flesh is taking the best of me. Mm. I'm fearing for my life. Yes. And the Bible says uh. that he asks Elijah, what is that doing here? Yes, sir. Now understand, I'm afraid that somebody is 
is going to have to be asked the same question. Mm -hmm. God's going to come back on a Sunday just like this. And we're going to be sitting here at this great church. We're going to be sitting here under the air conditioner. We're going to be driving our Rolls Royces, toting our mm -hmm. suitcases, swinging on the chandelier, mm -hmm. doing jump, jumping jacks in the middle of the floor. And God's going to ask us the question. And he's going to say, man of God, what are you doing here? Yeah. 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 Amen. Understand if God has given you the power Amen. to walk on such yeah. scorpions and they not even bite. If God has given you the power to bring put life into dead situations. If God has given you the power to shut up the heavens and the heavens given the rain, don't you know God wants you to use that power to yes. bless His people? Yes, Amen. He has to come to Elijah and say, Elijah, listen, the only reason I bless you is so you can bless somebody else. Yes. He yes. said, but Elijah, I got people that are hungry and yes. you're not feeding them. I got people that are naked and yes. you're not told them. I got people that are sick and in prison and yes. you're not visiting them. Hey, man of God, what are you doing here? What are you doing? And I'm mighty afraid God's going to come back on a Sunday just like this. And he's going to ask us, hey, man of God, yes, what are you yes. doing here? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is this something? Amen. Yes. That everything that, that comes to us in for us. That's right. The only reason God blesses us that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody it's, else. Listen, Amen. God could have chose anybody when he chose us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, too. The Bible records. That God tries to get Elijah's attention. Yeah. You see, somewhere Elijah must have forgot. Yeah. You see, God can bless us so long. Yes. God can bless us so good, so long, we'll forget the provisions God has given us. Oh my God. Yeah. Elijah had forgot. Yeah. Elijah is lodging in a cave. Yes, sir. Telling the Lord, Lord, yes. giving the Lord a sad story. Yes. Yes, the Lord said, I'll tell you what. I got to get his attention. Yes, sir. And I'm going to get his attention, and I'll tell you how I'm going to get it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to send a great whirlwind. Yes. The Bible says the, that the whirlwind came. That the that the wind hit the rocks, and that the wind hit the mountains, and that, that the mountains break. And Elijah looked up at it and looked back down because God won't in it. Isn't something God will try to get our attention? some kind of way, by some kind of tragedy, yeah. by some kind of mishap, in some kind of way, when we don't see God in it, we'll look at it and we'll look back down and those situations will stir us, will move us, will cause us to change. Mm -hmm. God said, I know, I know, I, I didn't give the attention to it, but I'm sure to give the attention this time. i tell you what I do, I share an earthquake. Yeah. I'll turn in that quick and I'll divide some of those things that he's been depending on. Some of those friends he's been leaning on. Some of those things he's been, 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 been counting on. I'll divide them. The earthquake comes to separate stuff. I'll separate you from your job. I'll separate you from your friends. I'll separate you from some of your loved ones. Yes. And the Bible says that Elijah looked at the earthquake and he looked back down because God wasn't in the earthquake. Yes. It is something how God's trying yes, to dramatically get your, your attention. He tries to do it dramatically. And, and those things won't get your attention. God said, I'm going to try one more time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get his attention. I'm going to cause a firestorm. That yes. firestorm is going to, go, going to come into your life. Yes, the sir. tech back man will be at your house. Mm. The, the foreclosure man will have a sign in your yard. Mm -hmm. Your best friend will die. Yes. Your loved ones will come down with the uncurable diseases. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he'll burn all the impurities out of your life, trying to get your attention, trying to get you to do what he wants you to do. Amen. He's giving you all this power. He's giving you all this authority. He's giving you all of this to bless other people. And he's got people that are sick and you won't even tend to them. Mm -hmm. He's got people that are hungry and you won't even feed them. He got people that are naked and you won't even close them. Mm -hmm. People that are in prison and you won't even go see about them. And he's going to say to you, man of God, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you really doing here? And God has to do us just like he did Elijah. Trying to get our attention. Then he finally tells Elijah, he says, okay, I've tried. Elijah, come to the mouth of the cave. Come to the mouth of the cave. Elijah gets up and he starts to drag. You know? Yeah. He starts to drag. Amen. 
And God has to assure the Elijah, Elijah, listen, uh, I know you don't want to do it. You don't act like you want to do it. But I got 7,000 even bowed the knee to Baal. I got 7,000 haven't even kissed.